Number three. Okay. Good morning, everyone, and I bid you welcome to Port Wallace United Church in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Je vous souhaite la bienvenue de toutes les personnes qui nous joignent de toutes les parties du monde. À Nouvelle-Écosse, à Dartmouth. Welcome to Alice in District Herica. Welcome to all people as we join in the worship of God this morning from this place. If you have a candle, I'd ask you to take that candle now for whenever two or three are gathered together in Christ's name, Christ stands in our midst to bless us. Helen is lighting the candles on the table, as you can see in one of the frame, and we will light our candles at home. You remember, there were two or three are gathered together. Christ stands in our midst. So we light this candle, knowing that Christ is with us. Will you join me in our opening responses? Arise and shine, for our light has come. The glory of the Lord has come. O Lord, open our lips. O Lord, open our eyes. O Lord, open our ears. O Lord, open our hearts. O Lord, open our lives. And as we rejoice with all creation, we sing to God's praise the hymn numbered 131 in more voices. You have it printed for you in your bullet. Please join us in the celebration. As we gather together now, our student minister, Tamsin, comes to read our scriptures. Good morning. Our scripture lesson for today is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Then the Pharisees met together to find a way to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples, along with the supporters of Herod, to him. Teacher, they said, we know that you are genuine and that you teach God's way as it really is. We know that you are not swayed by people's opinions because you don't show favoritism. So tell us what you think. Does the law allow people to pay taxes to Caesar or not? 
Knowing their evil motives, Jesus replied, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used to pay the tax. And they brought him a denarion. Whose image and inscription is this? He asked. Caesar's, they replied. Then he said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were astonished, and they departed. Here ends the reading. And this part goes out to the younger generation. And I think the first question that comes out of this Bible story is, who is Caesar? Well, Caesar was the ruler of the entire known world. He was a big deal. And back then, people had to give money to Caesar because it was the law. Caesar made the laws. And so the people come up to Jesus and ask him, do we really have to pay money to Caesar? And everyone knew that Caesar was just going to use that money to build a bigger palace. And that's not very fair. So if Jesus said yes, they would think he was okay with that. And if Jesus said no, he would be breaking the law. So you know how when something belongs to you, you can write your name on it. Jesus says, whose name is on the money? Caesar's name is written on the money. The money might belong to Caesar, but what belongs to God? You know what I think? I think everything belongs to God. Remember, God made everything. And so God's name is written on everything. We see God's presence all around us in their creation. And that's why we celebrate God's presence right now on Sunday morning. Will you join me in the teaching prayer? In peace, dear God, I come to you through Jesus Christ, who makes me new. And while I run or play or rest, be with those whom I love best. Guide me in your holy way as you walk with me each day. Amen. Our hymn is taken from more voices once again. I am a child of God, number 157. The words will be put up for us in our bullet. That was written by Bruce and Cheryl Harding, musicians of the United Church from the Vancouver area. Let us pray. 
May the words in my mouth and the meditations in all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Have you ever tried to put together a jigsaw puzzle? It seems to be a common activity these days as people gather around the tables and not know quite what to do. Let's get a jigsaw puzzle and let's put it together. Now trying to piece together all the different parts until they make the whole picture again is sometimes a labor of frustration. We don't know quite how we're going to get it done. So some people start off with a 20 piece pizza, piece, pizza puzzle. <laughs> pizza wouldn't be bad either. And then they move to 500 and then they move to 1000 and then they move to a different shape puzzle, and then finally they move to a three-dimensional puzzle. So these are various stages in developing your skills and how to put together the puzzles of life. Each part is integral to all the others, and if one is missing, that hole in the puzzle jumps right out to you. The blank is glaring, and what is missing makes the whole picture somehow seem incomplete, as if something is missing, and some people say, it's all kaput. St. Paul, in writing to the church at Corinth, stressed that all Christians are likewise an integral members of the body of Christ. Each one is necessary for the body of Christ to be whole, to be complete, and that none is more important than the other. But if one were missing, then something's missing in the whole body, and the church is incomplete. He wrote to that church, there are many different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are many different kinds of service, but it is the same Lord who is served. There are many different kinds of activity, but it's the same God who empowers everyone and everything in this world. Now to each of us, there is given a manifestation of the spirit and it is given for the common good of all. And just as the body, though one has many members, all of its parts form that one body. For all of us members were baptized by the one spirit to form that body. The church, like society today in many places of the world, was fractured. It was divided into many factions. It was a jigsaw people, a puzzle with all the pieces out of place. Some of you might remember Dolly Parton singing, when my life gets like a jigsaw with the pieces out of place. That's what was happening to the church in Corinth. That was what's happening to the world. That is what continues to happen in the world today, like a jigsaw puzzle. The pieces are out of place no longer joined together. Paul sought in Corinth to bring the members of the church all back together into one body. He sought out the various members that were going off in this way and that way, and he remembered them. He brought them back together, putting the members back together to form the body that was to be Christ's living presence in the world. And this is what remembering is all about, not just thoughts, it's to remember, to put the whole thing back together so we can see the larger picture. In the communion service, Christ says, do this in remembrance of me. And that is not simply just to remember that one act at the Lord's Supper, but to bring to mind all the various acts of God that Jesus had done in his lifetime, all that Jesus was accomplishing, all that Christ was accomplishing in Jesus, all that was being taught, all that was being newly understood, to start to see things in a different light, helping people clarify what the world was about. This is what we remember. All those various pieces come together like a jigsaw puzzle. And to piece them all together so that we see the larger picture and start to grip the larger enterprise of what God is about in Jesus. To do this is to capture a vision of the entire picture. A vision of what it means to be our mission as the living body of Christ in this world. When we piece together all the pieces of the jigsaw of faith, then we enter into the larger picture, into communion with Christ and all that Christ is. When we share communion, we restore to our minds the stories of Christ. We revive all the parts of his life that have spoken to us and to others. We recount all his deeds of mercy and kindness. We re-accept the challenges and we truly remember Christ. Take all the parts that he, is him and bring them together so that he becomes a living presence in our midst. We remember the challenges he posed to those who were in authority. We remember and restore in our minds his confrontation with evil in a myriad of its forms. We remember his inclusion of the stranger, the sojourner, the Samaritan, the Syrophoenician woman. And we remember his vision of a society where there is neither male nor female, Jew nor Gentile, bond nor free, 
for all are one in Christ, as Paul puts it. To remember is to bring all the constituent parts of the story of salvation back together until we see the kingdom of God, capture a vision of what can be, and start on our journey homeward to God. Each time we eat together, we are called to remember Christ, and so we say grace to invite him at our table to enrich our conversation so that he may become alive in us and we find life in him. Remembrance Day is formed with the same concept in mind. On November 11th, we are not just to remember one piece of the puzzle. We are not just to remember the fallen soldiers from World War I. That is just one piece of the larger picture. We are called to remember all the fallen soldiers throughout time and all those who are living who have died a thousand deaths in the cause of justice and righteousness and freedom. We are called to remember the situations in the world that brought about world wars, to see the larger interaction. We're called to remember the despots for claiming power, how greed, envy, ethnic tensions, religious heritages, how they were all used and manipulated by hate-filled egocentric demigods. We are to make certain that the next generation is able to see these pieces still present in our world today, still on the table of the jigsaw of life, and see how these pieces are still trying to come together today, and then to call them out and to head them off before another war is started. When we met with the Secretary Generals of the World Council of Churches last May on the pilgrimage to Teze, one of them spoke very soundly, said, we've had two world wars and we're halfway on the way to the third world war already. And nobody is putting the pieces together. We remember how empires fought against each other in the first world war and gained but a few feet of ground ground insufficient to bury the millions of dead that died. As the ancient European empires demanded our loyalty and convinced millions to fight for our leader, so in the last century, political empires were replaced by economic empires. And these are once again being replaced by populist regimes where loyalty is demanded once again by political leaders who tear the country apart in their demands for blind loyalty and who shut the doors to those who are not like them and want them eradicated. Remembrance Day is not to glorify war. It is to remember the causes of war, the frustrations that were and are felt by groups of people in our society that became the breeding ground for hatred, to remember the egocentric politicians and leaders who proclaim themselves to be the saviors of their time, who, complain, who proclaim themselves to be the Caesar of their day, and who worked the crowds into a frenzy to remember the baseless propaganda that was rampant, that is rampant, which paints the world into us and them so that people become faceless, the groups become vilified, and that nationalities and nationhoods become praised and exalted before all else. Remembrance Day should wake us up to the fact that these same forces are still present in our world. It should make us vigilant that these forces of hatred, manipulation, xenophobia, and exploitation are still lurking and still capturing the minds of people who have never seen the larger picture, who only live in their own myoptic existence. People who only see their one piece of the jigsaw and think they have everything down pat. People who think that they're entitled to be better off than another whom they believe is keeping them from their success or keeping them from a job or keeping them from the possibility of better life and who are willing to label them with some disturbing label to engrave upon them a name that is not theirs. And people are convinced that others are always to blame for their struggle. In the time of Jesus, the Jews felt the harsh oppression of Roman rule. One of the groups, the Zealots, of whom Simon, P Simon, one of the disciples of Jesus, was a member. These people wanted to overthrow the Romans. In Matthew's gospel, we have this group coming to Jesus. They want to use religion and to use Jesus as a religious figure to further their struggle against Rome. They didn't care about Judaism. They cared about a struggle. Jesus could see the larger picture and called them out on it. They said to him, tell us, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? 
But Jesus, seeing the larger picture and knowing their intent in their own period of time, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin that is used for paying this tax. So they brought him a denarius. And he asked them whose image is on this and whose inscription? Caesar's. Then Jesus said to them, give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. The essence of this passage lies in the words, whose image is this? In whose image is it made? Sometimes we forget the fact that we as Christians bear the image of God, bear the stamp of God. We are created in the image of God, with the imagination of God, with the love of God, with the desires of God becoming incarnate upon us. And that we have his name inscripted upon our foreheads at baptism. As Christians, we are made and are still being made in the image of God. And we must remember this in our day and time, piece by piece, action by action, day by day, we are being formed in the image of God, who constantly lifts us up to see the larger picture, who constantly reminds us that we are all his children, who constantly tries to counterbalance the shouts of nationalism and populism, which capture us and sometimes control us and sometimes work us into a frenzy. Although we may be of different and differing opinions, Christ tries to bring the pieces together and to piece us together, to remember us so that he can make his wounded body whole again. The war is not over when the guns grow silent. I am the son of a World War II veteran, and I know the, sons, the guns grew silent a long time before I was born, but still my father would wake up in the middle of the night screaming and I would hear my mother say, the war's over, Jim, the war's over. She tried to quiet him and wake him out of the hell of his memory. And she tried to help him see the larger picture to grow out of that one piece of his life and see things again. When we were married, I have a great friend from Germany, Heiko. And at our wedding, Heiko said, let's go dance. So we went and we danced and then my father called me over. And he said, the war is finally over. 40 some years afterwards, when the son of a Nazi and the son of a Canadian soldier can dance together and be the best of friends, the war is finally over. The war didn't end when the guns grew silent. The wars only end when we can make enemy, our enemies into our friends. It is only over when we see others, not through the worldly lens of us and them, but through the lens of Christ into whom we are all baptized. It is only over when we no longer label others with the inscription of Nazi, communist, capitalist, Leninist, imperialist, but see only the image of Christ in a person. So as we approach, approach Remembrance Day, let us remember whose image we bear. Let us remember not just one piece, but the entire story of what was happening in the world, that brought about wars so that we don't repeat it. Let us remember and tell people of how these various constituent pieces are still there in the world. Let us remember those who struggle, not for peace that ends war, but for justice, which removes, removes the fuel of conflicts. Let us remember that despite our differences, Christ seeks to bring us together, just as Paul sought to bring the various members of the church in Corinth back together, to remember them. Let us remember that despite all, Christ tries to bring us together, to take the strange separated pieces of the jigsaw and join us, each different piece, into an entity that is whole once again and that is beautiful. Let us remember whose image we bear. Let us get to know each other beyond what history it was, that we can see what we have in common. Let us overcome the rhetoric of hatred that we can see the children of God. And soon we will see that under the surfaces of different languages, religions, skin tones, economics, gender, orientation, age, or ability, we are each a beautiful creation, essential for the entire picture and can be put together with God to make something wonderful. Let us remember that we are made in the image of God, who is all imaginative, 
all created and always hope filled. After factitious events, wars, riots, elections, ethnic cleansings, brutal beatings, economic downturns, it is our calling as the body of Christ to take those who are shattered, to take the jigsaw of society and put it back together again. But moreover than this, it is our calling to call out those who belittle the image of God in any human being, to name them publicly and to expose them, and to confront them before they get started on their tirades, and to offer them the chance of repentance. It is our calling to remember the society in which we live, and it is the church's duty to awaken us lest we forget. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us what is necessary to be your living presence in this world. Grant us strength, grant us courage, and grant us, we pray you, your spirit of charity and love in all things. Through Christ our Lord, amen. I would call upon our student now to help us as we proclaim our common faith in the words of the statement of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to try to do the announcements a little bit differently. Both Tanson and I are trying to be here to we can make joint announcements for the congregation as we gather together. So the announcements will come up on the screen for us and we will make our announcements together, won't we? I think we're gonna to have to be half masked and half unmasked. So as we gather together, we thank you for joining us this morning for wherever you may be in this time of worship at Port Wallace United Church. You'll see that this week, November the 8th, come into the picture here. You see this week in November the 8th, we have various things to do. That uh, Sunday morning, there's this uh, worship service, and there'll also be a, a fellowship time afterwards where we can see each other and visit with each other. This will be posted in the chat. Tuesday, the discussion group at 7 p.m. is there. Wednesday, morning devotions. Wednesday, also at 12, we have the gathering of food for the food bank. You see the, the deal of the week listed there. Thursday morning, we have a coffee, drop in, Zoom, call the church. Thursday evening, 7.30, choir practice. Next Sunday morning is communion at 10 o'clock. So therefore we'd ask you to have bread and wine or bread and juice of some sort present to celebrate communion with each other. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, just a few announcements uh, from me. I'm about to form a lay supervision team uh, and I might be calling upon you in the next few weeks to see if you're willing to assist in, um, in that process. It's really important to my education as a student minister. Um, so yeah, just watch for that. Um, another thing that um, I'm doing is sort of um, a spiritual thing of my own. November contains a lesser known Remembrance Day on the 20th, which is Transgender Day of Remembrance. It's a day to remember transgender and gender non-conforming people who've been lost to violence and injustice. And so that's on Friday, November 20th. I'll be live streaming a special service for that uh, from my own Zoom account. Um, if you're interested, just give the church a call and I will email you the link. Thank you very much. Thank you.
You'll see in our prayer circle there, the people for whom we should pray. So please lift them up. Just say the names. God knows who they are. Also, I received a call from Pat Briggs. She has to be remembered for the congregation. She's recovering in St. John Regional Hospital from a few broken bones. So please keep Pat in your prayers. Also, sympathy of the congregation is extended to Carla Purcell and her family on the death of her mother's partner, Gordon, who will be buried this coming Thursday. Would you like to sing? I don't know if Adam wants to address the choir's concerns. Nope. Okay. You see the, <laughs> you'll see it's there. Cloth masks. The Advent Family Event is being sponsored by the fall of the Small Lunch Committee. This is, this is a great teaching opportunity for families. And besides the chrysomans, which are little ornaments that can be decorated, craft materials, there's a sheet with the meaning of each symbol. There's also a grace that is set out specifically for Advent. There's a reverse Advent calendar. There is a Bible reading Advent calendar and a Christmas nativity diorama. So these are great activities. If you'd like to have them for your family, please call the church office and we can arrange these packets to be available. Tell us the number of people in your family so we make sure that everybody has something to do. You see the pickup there is uh, Saturday, November the 28th from the church from 10 to noon. So please get your orders in so we can have those things prepared for you. United Church calendars are there. Also, if you're wrestling for with isolation, loneliness, need to talk to somebody, give us a call. We'll make time to sit down and have a talk with you. United Churches for Dartmouth for spiritual reflections. Ours is on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. So please join us for all those um, times of devotion. This weekend, the church, the larger church is meeting in Truro at First United to do ordination services. That will be broadcast live stream at that event that's there for you to click on. Thank you to all the people who worked so hard at a turkey supper yesterday. I believe it was a great success. There's also another turkey supper coming up at St. David's United Church in Lake Echo. Please take note of that announcement. We're also doing a Christian education series with um, Windholm Christian Church. You'll see the announcements there. If you'd like to join us, please join, email Darlene, Reverend Darlene Brewer at that address. Today, you'll see there's ways of making offerings. Those are all there, e-transfer, car, check. Thank you for making offerings. Thank you for supporting the church in this interesting time. There's also a pantry cupboard, which is available from Stairs Memorial Church in the north end of Dartmouth for the North Dartmouth Outreach Center. Please take note of the items they need if you'd like to make a monetary donation, please make, mark them North Dartmouth Outreach Center so we can continue the support of this important mission in our city. The electronic newsletter is there. Please, please, please join that so we can send out news to the congregation and keep everybody abreast of what is happening. And all things, wash your hands, eat healthily, and call a friend. Okay? Hampton, is there anything else you'd like to say to the congregation? You think that's it? Okay. Hi, Ben. Yes. It's Kathy. Um, we are showing the Zoom links here for this, uh, this series of talks, but in order to get them and get them clickable, they're not published on the website, so you will have to email the church office, Okay. and then we'll give them out from there. Okay. We shall make that happen, won't we? Okay. Now come time for our offerings. We offer ourselves, our time, and our possessions to God in many ways. And I invite you to remember that with me in the offertory prayer. Dear God, receive the offerings I bring to you this day. The offerings that are in my heart, the offerings that are in my hands, the offerings that are in my mind, the offerings that are in my soul. Receive my time, talents, and treasures. May I become a means for you to reach another. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. At this point, the choir is going to lead us in an anthem, and the anthem is found as an inscription in one of the concentration camps. So let's hear from somebody from that period of our history. The anthem is, I believe.
To believe even when things are silent. Let us pray. Almighty God, there are times you have tried to have been silenced, when people have tried to turn from you, to deafen you, drown out your melodies in this world, and the cause of war has risen, and the guns drowned out the songbirds, and yet they continued to sing as the winds of war have tried to drown out your voice many times, till you speak. Help us to listen with ears that are not caught up in the conflicts of the world, but are listening for the voice of reason, for the voice that speaks of a new way, for the voice that speaks of peace. We give you thanks for people who are brave enough to stand up to injustice, who are brave enough to call out demons, who are brave enough to stand up even at the cost of their own lives for what is just in this world. We give you thanks that there are still brave men and women, lights, luminaries, shining in human darkness, calling people to a higher and a nobler way. We give you thanks for these people. We give you thanks for the unseen laborers, for doctors and nurses and all those people in research who try to bring health and sensibility to our world. We give you thanks for theologians that stand up 
against the causes of evil. We give you thanks for those who maintain the structure of our world. We give you thanks for those who feed us in body, in mind, and in spirit. We give you thanks for those who make melody and who lift us above the mundane into the realm of music and beauty. For artists and artisans, for all people who take what is and craft it with your skill into something more wonderful, we give you thanks. We ask your blessing upon the children of this world, that as they grow up to take over society, they may be inspired by you with dreams of freedom instead of being slaves to greed. We give you thanks for young people. We give you thanks for our elders who have taught us, have guided us, who have helped us piece the pictures back together again to see the larger whole. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for times and places, for peoples and presence, through whom you have spoken to guide us. We ask you to bless this world where there is war, not only to end war, but to bring justice, where there is inequality to help us to see beyond the color of one's skin into the richness of their character, to see beyond what is on their head, to see what is in their head, and to see beyond their past into the path that they are on now, leading to glory. Help us with your eyes to see this world that you love. Be near to those who are sick, who are in hospital, who are in nursing homes, who are in situations that are strange to them. Bring them comfort this day. Be near to those who are wandering, weary, trying to find a path and be a light. Be near to each one of us. Lift from our hearts the burdens we have brought. Wipe from our foreheads furrows of care. Smooth from our soul the lines of worry and doubt and grant us peace. We pray that wise men and wise women will appear not only in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, but in all world capitals. And we pray for those who will take new offices in this world. They should be guided by your spirit and not by the winds of hatred. Guide all people, as into your hands we give ourselves and all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray before you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe, wie in Himmel so auf Erden. Give us this day our daily bread, et pardon nos offenses, Comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Vers lats in riach, ag se kumach, ag se glor. Ushiori. Amen. Our final, hand, our final hymn is When Hands Reach Out Beyond Divides. Number 169 in More Voices.
Yes, love will set us free. Return to your bulletin and join me in the words of the parting prayer. Bless to us, O God, this day, the doors we open, the thresholds we cross, and all the roads that lie before us. Go with us always as we go, and at the close of our day, welcome us home. If you take your candle to extinguish the light, to remember that the light of Christ is not in candles. The light of Christ is within us. Through us, God makes the appeal to the world. You are the light of the world. Will you join me in the benediction? May the blessing of the maker be yours, circling us, above us, and within us. May the blessing of the sun be yours, the wine and the water, the bread and the stories, to feed us and remind us. May the blessing of the spirit be yours, the wind and the fire, the still small voice have come to comfort us and disturb us. And may the blessings of God, three in one and one in three, be yours sustained every day to protect us, defend us, encourage us and strengthen us. And may we bless each other, a blessing rooted in our common pilgrimage, the blessing of a friend. If you're sitting alone, look at your computer and bow gently to the computer. Think of all the friends you are reaching today. If you're sitting with other people around you, turn and look at them and smile and give them God's blessing. As we look around the church, the choir that's gathered here, many blessings go from this place, beyond this place, into your world. You join us now in the choral prayer that we sing as we leave this place and walk into God's world. May the peace of God that passes all human understanding be with you and remain with you to this day. In Christ our Lord. Amen. The recording of the worship service will be